Hello everybody and thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I'm going to be building a wall mount storage cabinet for my wife's sewing and embroidery thread. The cabinet holds about a hundred spools of thread, uh, 50 on each of the inner and outer doors. Um, the overall dimensions are about 12 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and about 8 or 9 inches deep uh, off the wall. Before I get into the build video though, I want to give my apologies for not producing a video in the last month or two. Uh, my dog, as you can see here, had a torn ACL, and which required major surgery. He took pretty much my every bit of free time that I had to take care of him. Uh, good news is he's fully recovered from his operation and uh, is back to normal. So I started out by uh, cutting the three-quarter inch plywood into all of my pieces. Um, I made sure to cut all the pieces that were the same size at the same time. That way they were all identical and I wasn't trying to uh, match dimensions and you know be off by a sixteenth or a thirty second here and there. So just a reminder here to uh, watch out for kickback. Uh, this kickback occurred um, on the outside part of the blade, so uh, they don't always have to occur with the piece of material that's between the blade and the fence. So I had a bit of an operator malfunction, uh, I forgot to press the record button. Uh, thankfully we didn't miss very much, uh, just missed the marking and drilling of all of the pocket holes. Where I screwed up drilling the uh, pilot holes on the bottom and top, but I should have drilled them onto the back. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of screws directly in through the bottom and in through the top, uh, just use a couple of uh, inch and 5 eighths drywall screws. Shouldn't hurt anything, barely be able to see it. What I just installed was the uh, the top strike plate, I guess you want to call it, where the uh, the inner door will hit as the inner door swings in. It'll hit up against this uh, strike plate. And here I'm setting up to cut a, a couple of four-inch spacer blocks that I'll uh, use here in just a moment to uh, mount the inner door. Uh, these don't actually get attached to the cabinet, they're just used to space that, I guess you could call it a shelf, that the inner door uh, attaches to.
So to mount this, I'm going to drill holes through from the front and then put screws in from the back into this along with, uh, with wood glue. So here I'm putting about a 10 degree bevel on the top edge of the inner door to uh, keep it from hitting the uh, top of the cabinet uh, as it's closing. So there was very limited space uh, to work in the, in the bottom of the, bo the cabinet and uh, attach the hinge to the inner door. Um, none of my screwdrivers would fit in there, so I ended up taking one of the uh, driver bits and uh, putting it in a, in a small block of wood and making my own uh, screwdriver, if you will, to uh, get in there and uh, have enough leverage to actually uh, attach the screws in the hinge. So even after making uh, my own little screwdriver, it still didn't give me quite enough leverage to, uh, to put the screws in. So I used a, uh, a longer piece of uh, scrap plywood and made a, uh, a push, push bar, if you will, to, uh, to help hold the screwdriver against the screws. So when I designed the box, I originally assumed that the plywood was going to be exactly 0.75 inches. Uh, in reality, it was 0.71, and this caused me to have a slight overhang on the sides on the top and bottom that I had to trim off uh, after I had assembled the cabinet. Installing this lid stay at first appeared very simple and easy. Um, ultimately, it became very frustrating and caused uh, several problems. Um, the slightest misalignment, and it was causing the lid to kick over um, a quarter to a three-eighths of an inch and uh, really bind the uh, hinges. So if you're installing one of these lid stays, just pay very close attention to the instructions and the tolerances and the measurements that the instructions call out. So I decided to uh, countersink the uh, holes on the inside where the handle screws were going to go. Um, countersunk them by about an eighth of an inch uh, just to keep them out of the way of the uh, spools of thread. Um, this resulted in the screws being ever so slightly too long and I had to uh, use a Dremel and cut them off.
So as I went through the build, I decided I really didn't like the look of the front door of the uh, cabinet. So I disassembled everything and then proceeded to cut down the, the front door. I removed about two inches off of uh, each of the sides and then uh, wrapped the, the perimeter of the door with um, one by two poplar strips. It made it look more like a cabinet door rather than just a, a blank slab of wood. So believe it or not, I did not have a center punch or any um, type of sharp object that I could use as a center punch. So I ended up having to make my own. I just used an old um, mini screwdriver and I filed the point down uh, into a sharp point. Ended up working very well for marking the, uh, the, the centers of the holes where all the pegs were going to be drilled. Uh, center punching and drilling 100 peg holes was uh, was tedious and a little bit time consuming but it was nowhere near as mind-numbingly boring as uh, cutting the hundred pegs from quarter inch dowel rods and then sanding in a taper so that the uh, bobbins could be uh, slipped over the peg with the uh, spool of thread I had originally uh, built the uh, the cabinet to use a magnetic latch, which you probably saw earlier in the video. But after playing with it for a while, the magnet just did not have enough strength to hold the door closed. So I replaced it with this, um, I guess you call it like a double roller pinch latch. I'm not quite sure what they're called. But uh, this, this worked out much better and holds the door very securely. So this is the completed cabinet. You can see the uh, the inner and outer door uh, both populated with uh, with thread. Um, it's worked out very well. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.